Pretty Little Liars, the TV show, sometimes deals with disturbing and problematic topics. We provide a list of content warnings in the episode description. Dead ends. I'm Emily. I'm Brenton. And um, we have two new episodes. The first two from season three. Of Pretty Little Liars for you. Oh, yes. These are good episodes. Yeah. Production value goes way up in season three. <laughs> uh, very strong opening. Mm-hmm. I think that pilot was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's the best use of the flash forward uh, or jump forward um, that they've done that yet. Because they've... Um, gone to that well a few times now but i think this is the best one yeah because what happens is like everything happens in a really condensed period of time and then we have to do these major time jumps or else um you get nothing Mm -hmm. right and so i think it makes sense to like even though the show aired in summer to like take off summer if that makes sense yes and finally be like okay transition to a new year um and i think the um what everybody was up to quote unquote and where we kind of pick up with the characters are, is interesting mm-hmm. um, and gives us a, a nice little path forward for mm-hmm. the rest of them um, for a lot of our stuff. So exactly. Yeah. What's, you know what the highlight of this is though? Actually, I'm just going to tell you my favorite part. Okay. Elle is leaving Byron. Like, thank <laughs> yes. God I was waiting for this. Cause I was like, don't worry. She will, she will, she will go. She will go for real, but it's going to, I'm like, yeah um i didn't realize because it was it starts out at least in the pilot and then i think it's different in this in the second episode where she's like she's packing up things Uh uh-huh and then it's just like including their like wedding album right and i didn't quite realize it's like oh she's moving out Mm -hmm. (laughs) again byron um being like well if you're gonna divorce me you have to move um yeah i don't know I don't know Byron's vibe. Right. And Ella just being like, path of least resistance. I got to get out of here. Uh-huh. Um, I'm going to go live at the art studio. Yeah. I don't I don't remember if she moves back there where she goes. Mm-hmm. But again, I would I would say the Marin household. But, you know, um, <laughs> she does not move into the Marin household. Far be it for me to suggest it. Um, the way, wayward women. <laughs> the Marin household of wayward women. Uh-huh. Um, no, because you might get hit on by Byron there. Yeah. <sighs> Ever since you brought that up a couple episodes ago, it's just like, God damn. Uh-huh. Remember the facts. Um, yeah, but at least the nice thing about transitioning to season three is just like, ooh, I can like read about like season two. Um, <laughs> I can like di- at least like dive into things without like eh, worrying about stuff. Um, so that was fun. Uh, but one thing it, like, I thought that was like interesting to bring up is the well, one how popular the show is. Like, so looking at there's an Entertainment Weekly write up on the season two finale, checking in with Marlene King and uh, Oliver Goldstick, um, exec producers. You know, talking to them about it. So you know, like big things happening there, and like, well, what happens with the finale and stuff. Um, and so I think it's like interesting um, pointing out like that. They talk specifically, it, I think it addresses kind of both of our feelings on the finale of mm-hmm. last episode, where um, they talk very in-depth about why Mona would do this. Uh, one, she was bullied by Allison, so of course it had to be her. Mm-hmm. Um, and two, Like that, the whole town wasn't? Right, exactly. But, um, and like, two, that uh, she, like, that it's like, well, yeah, she did lose her friend. She lost her friend, Hannah. Like, or, and she, or she felt that she was doing it. And wow, in a sense, maybe like bringing A back up when people come back into town really brought them back together, really backfired on Mona. And like that stuff was like, ah, that's the stuff I didn't like from last episode. But yet they're talking down the, the paragraphs of just like, who's on this like A team that she was talking about? Who else she could, could she be working with? So speaking to your, I think, in a longer term, that this will be like a little bit more, you know, where you go is like, well, that's not the real answer. We're going to find out more. Uh huh. Um, which uh, I think, w- well, you know, I think that fuels the speculation, but I, I think kind of speaks to both of our reactions of like, if you're, I think taking in a vacuum, I found it a little bit wanting, but you're like, but there's, it's takes place in seasons. So it's going to be more. Yes. Um, I think so. Welcome to being a true Pretty Little Liars fan. Marlene King is a bold faced fucking liar. 
she just lied all the time. Well, she didn't necessarily lie. She was not telling no. us the whole truth. Or right. She was telling us anything but the truth, honestly. Um, it was very it was very hard, like, reading her interviews or, like, her tweets at the time. They were all very intentionally misleading. Mm-hmm. So it got to the point where I was... I just didn't... I mean, like, I'd see what she put, and I was like, no, oh, that probably doesn't matter. Right. It's probably not relevant. Um, at that point, though, yeah, like, I... Um, I think that comes from also like season after season of being like, it's got to be this. Like, it's got to uh-huh. be this. And then you're like, she said it couldn't be that. <laughs> right. She said, no, it wasn't that. Or it uh-huh. would be different. Or, you know, or it would be the same, or, you know. Right. I think um, that's a really interesting point, too, because you have mentioned it before. Um, and it's a, a big thing. I don't think we really talk about it too much, but like how this was Twitter's show. Uh-huh. Like, this was a really big thing on Twitter. You've talked about, I think, Tumblr before. Uh, or other like blogs and things. Um, yeah, but like Twitter was where like they had like hashtags and it was very like social media savvy. Right. Um, and I think that plays into that, right? Um, yes. and, I, and I thought it was super interesting. I, I mentioned the show before. <clears throat> I'll mention it again because I think it's a actually really good companion piece to everything we talk about here is um, Homestuck Made This World, which is um, two academics diving into the webcomic Homestuck and like relating it to wider media criticism and uh, media culture and how things are created. What you kind of find as that comic goes on is that it leans into a lot of teen melodrama and soap of Mm -hmm. like, it is all about characters, um, like uh, ships and things like that, of like how they like relate to one another, but also that same sort of thing that Pretty Little Liars had where there's a mystery and further things for you to find out. And that's like the carrot on the stick, mm-hmm. along with people talking in depth about like, well, what about this person and this person? Um, and how the author like plays with them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a similar thing here. And they did a, a bonus episode through their Patreon on Lost, another show, which is 100% this. I the, Listening to that episode of unlocked all sorts of lost thoughts in my head and and like renewed my like lost idea <laughs> like, totally <laughs> renewed my like a thought of like oh it would be fun to do lost for this show which you know, hopefully it wouldn't like completely turn people off and my pitch for it would be this the aims are exactly the same like the the aims of both of these shows are not distinct at all lost just has the layer of a really high concept and unbelievable and way less grounded. Um, that's, but th- that's b- less grounded than pretty little liars. Yes. I just like, I have a hard time imagining that show being good. It's so <laughs> she comes for loss. She's never seen yeah. it. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I haven't it's seen it since it finished airing. Angry lost fans out there coming for me. <laughs> Uh, even people are like, so like the mysteries week to week, they're trying to keep you there with the mysteries. Right. Uh-huh. But then of course it's all about the characters and their relationships to one another. Um, in the bonus episode, okay. they even talk about one of the producers on there. Carlson Cuse is like, Oh, it's all about love. It always comes back to love. Okay. Which is like, so that's why I say like the aims are yeah, like the, so the aim similar. Of this one is friendship. Um, in a sense, and right? Romance. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same. I mean, you could say the same thing about Lost. There are like platonic and like romantic relationships spring up there. Um, and even the ending of that show will double down on that it was all about the characters. Okay. Um, and that left a lot of people. The polarized. ending of Pretty Liars will double down on the fact that there was obviously no one behind the wheel. <laughs> right. Well, Lost is similar, but we can we could talk about that at, at another date and then talk it. You know, mm-hmm. I was gonna say internally, but we'll do about that off mic. God, <laughs> we'll take this offline. Speak. Exactly. Uh, and if we would even potentially do that in two years, but I did want to mention um, they pulled in an article from a TV, um, uh, not not TV critic, uh, TV like the TV studies okay. person, David Columbia, where speaking to because they they're like this is illustrative of exactly Homestuck, and I think it's illustrative of just speculative shows in general is what their kind of goal is because this is them speaking about Lost and how the more popular it is. Like the more incentivized they are to fuel speculation and prolong the mystery. Um, so it's like the bigger you get, the more you got to go. Like you, the more you got to keep it kind of like doling out here. Mm-hmm. And I think that's an incredibly useful framing for everything you're bringing up about Twitter online, Martin King, and just the way this show is just like, okay, we'll give you a little bit, but like there's going to, there's way more that you don't know yet. 
Um, we'll show you that there's a cake, but then we'll give right. you a piece of pie is really how this <laughs> works. And speaking of pie, like uh, they mentioned on the episode, which is so true, Twin Peaks tanked once they revealed who Laura's killer was. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, you know, it's not like just a quote unquote, like, not manip- I don't want to say manipulative, but um, like a tactic to keep you interested. Mm-hmm. It's like it, 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 that's how audiences feel. It's just like, oh, well, I don't. OK, we found out like goodbye. <laughs> I mean, it's also like the same with like, even if you think of like a new girl or like any show that has like a coupling or a romance, you can get you once you get past a certain level of like, OK, like these characters are are flirting and they're together or Luke and Lorelai, mm-hmm. like they couldn't put them together until way later in the series or else yeah. it wouldn't have worked. Uh, um, the uh, the one before the the er example for a generation before us is uh, Cheers, Sam and Diane. Uh huh. Um, so. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, you know, I found it again Then, if you want to, it's a very different show from ours, but, um, I think it's very interesting to watch it side by side or listen to it side by side with like watching Pretty Little Liars. Cause it's like, oh yeah, this map's completely on top of it. Love it. Um, but yes, speaking of Pretty Little Liars, mm-hmm. are you ready to recap? I am. Uh, episode 48, season three, episode one, it happened. Open on the barn and a five months later tag at the bottom. That's uh, while S and M by Rihanna plays. Um, the friends are all in Spencer's house catching up on their summers. Um, Hannah got like an internship or <laughs> didn't get an internship, but has a really great line about how she re- like she's like they wanted me to work for free, so no thanks. <laughs> uh huh. Um, and Emily, we learned was um out in Haiti building houses. Um, kind of escaped from Rosewood. Um, she puts a very strong pour of alcohol in her drink and Arya tells her to slow down and Emily and like calls her like a pixie and like can't drink much because of that. And like, I've gotten really good at this. So we know Emily's in a healthy place. Uh, they all then get a text that says they're like, Oh, like it's a again, quote unquote. And it says, show me your boobs. And they're like, I wonder if Mona's got a 10 year old brother. Uh, so insinuating that they've been receiving spam texts from people claiming that they were a, they all say it'll eventually stop and hopefully they'll be old news soon. Um, they cheers to making it to senior year and then Emily turns sad and says not all of us made it. Here's to Maya instead. And the friends all look sad and Hannah like tells her that they're all there for her. We then cut to some time later uh, echoing the pilot as Hannah and Arya are in sleep are asleep in the living room. Uh, but Emily and Spencer are not there. Arya wakes up and sees the door to the backyard is open. Uh, Hannah then wakes up as well, and we see Spencer come downstairs and tell them that Emily is gone. Spencer, um, uh, or sorry, they call Emily's phone, and then the scene cuts to Emily in the graveyard with a shovel in front of Allison's grave, and the grave is all dug up, and the casket is open and empty. The weirdest part of to me, uh, sorry, like I know we can talk about this later, but like it's not like oh they took her casket they just took the body Uh uh-huh like that's so fucking weird it's really weird (laughs) um and like what else was in there and everything else in it yeah yeah i think it's very effective to just have this like Uh dug up grave with an open casket but it's so weird it's really weird (laughs) um yeah and i thought it was pretty effective here too that it's just like oh they're literally echoing the pilot Mm -hmm. um we then see the friends are all gathered um at the graveyard and Arya asked Spencer um, how like quietly like how Emily could not remember anything um, and they agree that Emily actually didn't have anything to do with like the digging of the grave because she can literally barely stand. Uh, Spencer then looks through Emily's phone and finds a call from a block number at 11. Uh, Emily doesn't remember who it was. Spencer then sees she got a call that Emily got a call from her phone at 12 when she was asleep. Spencer then looks on her phone and sees that, yes, indeed, her phone had called. Um, and she's like, this is obviously a setup. They then hear a shutter click and they all run away. Arya um, and Hannah, we see, are then in the woods with a shovel. Um, and Arya tells Hannah to wipe the shovel for prints. Um, as they wonder who would do this to Emily, they then bury the shovel and leave. Um, Emily then disrobes or back at the house, disrobes to get rid of all of her clothes. And they wonder who would do this and who would benefit um, from doing this to Emily. And that it must be Allison and Maya's killer. Spencer mentions uh, that Melissa is in Philly when accusations are thrown that way um, and says it has to be someone else not connected to Garrett. Uh, they then burn Emily's clothes in the fireplace. 
Hannah and Arya are then driving in downtown Rosewood uh, late at night, and they see Lucas running around the uh, the downtown, run to his car, get in, and drive away. Um, as Arya and Hannah arrive back at Spencer's house, Spencer advises that they all instead go to the lake house and leave a note for Spencer's mom that they were there all afternoon. We then cut to the next day where they're all waking up at the la lake house as the rotary phone at the lake house rings. Uh, Spencer picks up to her mom, calling them to tell... Uh, calling them to tell them about Allison's body disappearing. Spencer asks if there was any witnesses um, and then finishes the call with her mom. She tells the friends that the caretaker called it in and the police have no leads. Emily then says it's all her fault and like the friends are like, no, it's not your fault. You don't blame yourself. And Hannah reassures her that last night never happened. Arya says, are we sure? We can go to the cops and tell them the truth. Spencer instead gives them a rundown for their cover story and what they actually did at the lake house. They all agree last night didn't happen, but Arya looks worried about this. We then see Arya wake up suddenly from a nightmare, and we see she's at Fitz's apartment. Um, oh, it's a nightmare again. He asks if it was. He asks if it was a nightmare again, um, and he's like, "I thought they stopped." Uh, Fitz then shows her. Do people just think those just go away? <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really true i'd never thought about that but this is like a thing in uh -huh. fiction that happens all the time oh you were traumatized and then now you're supposed to just have gotten over it right no wonder oh. we all have these warped concepts of mental health we're like oh yeah trauma goes away eventually <laughs> it's like no right i would never even thought about that that's so funny that happens all the time in fiction it's just like i thought the nightmare stopped my favorite thing in literature is when like an like as I read it more in books, you tend to get better better storytelling in books because you know more words. Mm -hmm. Um, they have more words, <laughs> and they can tell you what's happening versus making you see it. Mm -hmm. Um, is when someone like has like a it's like oh it starts to improve and then it gets like like a normal oh, pattern right. it, starts, it gets down. worse and then it it starts to improve or like you finally have like a night without a nightmare and like I'm mm -hmm. like oh yeah like look at that yeah <laughs> you that. can kind of like track it like a person rather than like like a real person <laughs> right. Rather than it's like, we got like 45 minutes to like wrap this up. <laughs> You're better now. We only have to have, we can only have like one scene that pertains to this. Uh -huh. um, uh, Fitz then shows her the newspaper um, that says Maya found stuff um, that belonged to Allison. Uh, Arya's like, oh no, she gave it to Jason. And Fitz says, it looks like she might have kept some of it. Um, and it looks like some of that stuff they can now use to connect Garrett to Allison's murder. Uh, Fitz asks, hey, do you know what weekend this is? Arya's like, well, the anniversary of my friend's death. Uh, Fitz is like, no, silly. Don't you remember our fun meet cute where, like, <laughs> I thought you were uh, over 18 and we uh, hooked up at a bar? Um, they then make out, uh, or no, he, he asks her if they could instead make this weekend our anniversary and they make out on the kitchen counter. Hannah is shopping with Ashley. Um, and Hannah, uh, <laughs> Ashley goes to pick out an outfit, and Anna says, like, that outfit would only look good on a pregnant woman. Is there something I need to know? Ashley then mutters, I need to have sex to get pregnant. <laughs> Anna's like, Jesus. Uh, I thought that slip of Ashley's just, like, uh -huh. <laughs> so good. And the when did you become a prude? Right, yeah, but <laughs> that's what she follows up with. Uh, Veronica and Spencer then run into them in the store, and Ashley's like, all right, girls, you can go shop. Um, the moms then discuss the missing body, and Ashley asks if Garrett ordered the body to be dug up. Veronica says, you know, it's not a coincidence because the prosecution did actually order the body to be ex exhumed. Um, Ashley is uh, happy the girls were out of town for this. Um, we then cut over to the girls. As Spencer gets a call from an unknown number but ignores it, um, she lies to Hannah and says that was Toby and he'll call back. They notice that a couple of women from the town are watching them and Hannah calls the women out publicly and they leave. Spencer is worried about someone being in her house last night, um, then using her phone and wants to go out and just catch a movie to like forget things. But Hannah's like, no, sorry, I have an appointment with Dr. Sullivan today. Um, Spencer's like, oh, I didn't know you're seeing her again. Like, you're not going to tell her about last night. And Hannah's like, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, and Spencer's pretty much like, you can't tell us. You can't tell anybody. Um, as Hannah leaves, um, we see she had a necklace that uh, she had tried on in the store, um, goes like, oops, and like puts it on the rack um, and leaves instead of stealing it. Look at that. I know. Third act Hannah again. Exactly. <laughs> this is even more evolved than when we picked up from her. Um, 
We then get a POV shot of a nurse walking someone in to see Mona in her room. And then we cut to and see it's Hannah visiting her. Um, but you uh, notice this the, in this scene. Um, the name tag has Caleb's last name on it. Uh, Mona is non-respondent to her entering. Um, and one of my reading was like looking on the fandom, just a uh, fandom wiki to see if there was any like articles that were like, I could jump to like in the references. And one of them was like goofs from the season finale. And it's like, yeah, Dr. Sullivan says like Mona has a personality disorder. And usually that wouldn't be enough to call someone criminally insane. Um, so, you know, they're playing a little fast and loose with what's going on with, uh, um, Mona's uh, mental health yeah um and especially with like later scene in this too it's just like oh she's seeing someone and it's just like but it, it, she's just kind of like has like megalomania mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe not not even that I guess it, I I don't know enough about it to to say that specifically I you know don't need to throw that out there <laughs> yeah yeah and with it Mona's is interesting because there's a lot of it as you go where you start to go okay what what did they say it was again uh -huh. is it this <laughs> right huh Okay, but is it this? And then you're like, you know what? This is fiction. <laughs> right there. <laughs> They're just you doing um, what they think aesthetically would work well. Uh-huh. Yeah, which I'm I'm sure would uh, run into a lot of trouble with people for sure. Yes. Yeah, I can't imagine it being appropriate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Emily is in her room unpacking and looks at a picture of her and Maya, sadly. Um, Pam then walks in and is like, yeah, that was another reporter at the door. With Allison's body gone, and it's all of a sudden they want to come knocking again. Um, Pan says, it's like, you know, Emily, you made a difference this summer, and Maya would be proud. Emily, uh, or Pam mentions that grief will eventually stop hurting so much. Um, Emily's like, no, I'm fine, and then uh, leaves and walks out of the room. Hannah tries to talk to Mona, um, but she isn't, like, responding at all. Hannah asks if Mona's going to do that forever. And it's like, you know what? It isn't easy for me to get here and lying to everyone. And especially after last night, but cuts herself off. Um, she says, I'm not doing this for you. I'm here for me. And I want to know what I did to make you hate me so much. Mona doesn't respond. So Hannah goes to leave. And as she's walking out, she runs into Ren, <laughs> our multifaceted uh, medical man. Um, Hannah then corrects him on her fake name because he's like, oh, Hannah. And he's and she's like, or Miss Marin. And he's like, no, it's Rivers, Rivers, right? And he's like, oh, you look exactly like someone I know. Um, she uh, tells him not to tell anybody that he, she was here. Ren tells her that he volunteers here a few days a month. Hannah says, like, I'm just here to get answers. And Ren says mental illness rarely has, like, like solid answers for you. Trust me, I've spent a, lof a lifetime trying as they walk away, we see Mona, like, sticking in the door, watching them. Toby walks into Spencer's room from the shower in just his towel. Woo! Crowd cheers. Um, Were she's, you excited? <laughs> Be honest. Of course. You got Toby's abs. Uh-huh. You what got him in walking around episodes. with a shirt on? You got to pop him off. This is where, like, it's already, like, pretty common that it's like, okay, Toby, take off your shirt. But at this mm. point, it's just like, okay, Toby, take off right. your shirt. Yeah, like, what are you doing? every scene. Uh-huh. <laughs> Why does it, why does his costume today have a shirt? It should just be jeans. Um, Spencer's very happy to have a Toby uh, like coming over and using a shower, um, and they make out since her parents are out. Um, she's like getting frustrated with her decision to like tell Toby like that they should like wait to have sex. Toby then stops her and is just like, "Y'all forget all about that when I put some clothes on." Um, Spencer gets a call from an unknown number again and ignores it. Toby then tells he's like, I'm happy you all went to the lake house yesterday. Can't imagine what went through your head when your mom told you about it. Spencer's like, uh, can we not talk about this now? And Toby says, of course. At school, Hannah and Caleb discuss plans for dinner later and like catching up. Um, Hannah mentions that she'll like miss like cooking with him, but she'll be there later. And Caleb's like, all right. Aria, Spencer, and Hannah wait in line for registration. Uh, Lucas walks by, and he's now, like, kind of unshaven. He's got a lot of stubble. They say hi, um, but he keeps on walking, kind of gives them, like, a kind of, like, blank stare. He kind of looks like like where he's, like, kind of, like, tired, like, like not really, like, with him. Mm -hmm. They mentioned that he got dark after the masquerade ball. Dark Lucas. New character unlocked. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> they mentioned Jetta's uh, been gone all summer, and he's still acting weird. Hannah mentions, uh, you know how many skinny brunettes are in this school that could have fit into the uh, black swan costume? We then cut to Emily watching them from across the courtyard through the window and looking uncomfortable. 
Arya goes to the bathroom, uh, but finds she can't lock her stall. She hears someone come in and starts getting worried. And as she sees someone walking around like in a hoodie through the stall door, she screams for someone to help her. We then cut to Spencer and Hannah running in to find her curled up on the floor. She says she had a panic attack and thinks she saw A here. And they reassure her that it isn't Mona. Arya is like, are we sure that she's like actually still locked up? And they say like, yes, it's fine. Like I've heard she's still there. It's okay. Spencer is looking at the Black Swan uh, costume designs on her laptop as her mom walks in. Um, and it's just like, hey, like you should like come out. Let's go out to the city. And Spencer declines. Spencer then gets a call again and ignores it, and Veronica goes to leave uh, for Philly. Arya and Ella are packing boxes and, like, finding old, like, scrapbooks and memories, and Arya looks at the wedding scrapbook, and Ella says, you know, I wouldn't take back anything. We met young, but as we grow older, too many things that we couldn't reconcile. Maybe an affair. Uh, Arya yeah, I don't says, know. He fucked around and found <laughs> out. Like, it's really, like, there's not too many things. Like, Ella, Yeah, Ella, the vagueness that you are addressing this with your child is affecting her right now. Arya says, it's definitely me and Ezra. <laughs> and Ella says, no, that's not true. We're too different now. And that's okay. Yeah, if you maybe... like to fuck his student. I know. I don't like it when he does that. Uh-huh. Uh, Arya says, uh, mom, you know what? You're allowing me to be me by allowing Ezra in. To my shock. Ella says... <laughs> It's not open arms, but I'm not as bad, like, as your father. Emily is getting coffee as Toby walks in and joins her. I, I do like the this friendship. Mm -hmm. This is, like, the most wholesome friendship. Uh-huh. Um, it's the only real friendship in the show. <laughs> I guess that's true. Emily, like, really needs this. <laughs> uh, Emily is just, like, so, like, like anxious and just, like, ah. Uh. Like, where's all her feelings? And then she just needs a, a rock like Toby just comes in. And is like, hey, it's all right. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Emily says, sorry for taking you away from Spencer. And Toby mentions, like, nah, she's, like, studying. It's all right. Um, she asks him, like, how he moved into the loft. And Toby mentions and he moved into the loft after starting the remodel. So he's above the grill um, fixing up the loft. And that's where he lives. Above the coffee shop. Oh, the coffee the shop. Sorry. The brew. Um... And uh, that's why he like goes and showers. I just realized they have very, water. very lazy location names in the show. The, the grill brew. and the grill. <laughs> yeah, the brew. It's really funny. The blank. Um, Emily asks how Jenna is. And Toby says, I haven't talked to her since she left town. Toby asks if Emily's okay. And she says, I don't think I am. Emily's like, there's actually something I need to talk to you about. We then cut to Spencer in her car alone at night. And then see she's at the Lost Woods Resort alone. Spencer walks out of her car and hears a rustling in the woods. We then get a POV shot of someone watching her from the, t uh, uh, from the tree line. Uh, after the commercial break, Spencer walks into a room that's bare except for a chair and table. She then takes out her laptop out of her purse and sets it up. Caleb asks Hannah how her session was and like what she like talks about in her sessions and if she talks about them. Hannah gets a call from, um, oh, uh, she gets a call from R.S. and lies to Caleb uh, saying it's Spencer. Hannah walks away and picks it up and it's Ren calling from the uh, mental hospital. Radley Sanatorium. I was like, why R.S.? Right. Because <laughs> we don't actually get the name of it. I don't think in this one. Don't they refer to it as Radley at some point? Oh, they might have. Um Ren says Mona's actually making progress um, with you coming and visiting her. You should come down to see for tomorrow and see for yourself. Caleb asks, like, hey, what's going on? Like on the phone, and Hannah covers saying she was talking to Spencer. Emily continues to talk to Toby um, at the coffee shop about her anger and grief. Um, she says, like, you know, I was at a party with friends and I got so wasted. I don't remember anything and I let my friends down. Toby says, That's why you're a friend. They're your friends. They accept you for who you are. I'm saying I need Toby. Um, Spencer sits alone in the room. She gets a call from the unknown number, but this time she picks it up and says, I'm listening. Arya gets ready in her room as Ella walks in, telling her the police are here to talk to you. See, this is why I was confused at first of Ella moving out, because it's we only get Ella in this and she's existing in the in the Montgomery household. Mm -hmm. um, but then like when we see Byron later, it's like, oh, OK, so she must have moved out. 
Uh, and she was packing her things. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe she was still there temporarily. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. He could have been gone or something. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we see that uh the th three friends uh not Emily or yeah not Emily are being interrogated at the station uh by the police, and they all just tell the same story about being at the lake house. The moms are all outside um, waiting and Veronica walks out um, and says they're not being charged. It's just routine. Um, Ella sees Fitz walk up and goes to head him off. And it's like the last thing she needs is the police asking her about her relationship with a former teacher. He then looks at her dumbly and says, like, I thought we were past this. The friends walk out of the station and Arya walks up to the two of them. Fitz is like, hey, we can still make our reservation. Arya says, sure. I feel like the three of us are, are like probably pretty hungry from all this. Ella looks like, uncomfortable, but agrees. Hannah talks to Mona um, and asks if she remembers anything since she's been so doped up. Um, and mentions Rand and if Mona wants, like, she can keep coming back. Mona turns to her and smiles. But we see that Mona is looking past her. And instead, in an empty chair, she sees Allison uh, wearing a red coat with a copy of Lolita in her hands. Uh, Garrett gets pulled in to talk to a visitor at, at gets talked to a visitor through like the glass at the jail. Um, we he says to this unknown visitor at the moment um, that the cops were so close to pinning it on you. Um, and then we turn and see he's talking to Spencer. Garrett says, "Sorry, I had to keep calling you. I know what you think of me." I didn't do it. The evidence is bogus. And there's a lot you don't know. And there's a lot you don't want to know. He says, I don't know anything about Maya, but I know, but I may know who killed Allison. What I need to tell you is I need a lawyer and your mom is the best in the state. Spencer says, no way. Garrett says, it's not over. As Spencer goes to leave, he then shouts that he knows who took the body. As Spencer stops, but he gets dragged away. Emily is running, uh, is on a run, um, and stops when she sees a Mustang. Uh, and she has a first person flashback to being in a car, very similar car at least, as the like the convertible top opens. She then gets a text from an unknown number that says, Bet you remember me as the car drives away. Hannah, Spencer, and Aria wonder why Emily wasn't at the police station as Hannah goes to call her. They hear a phone ring uh, and see that Emily's outside. They let her in and she's crying. Emily says, sorry, I didn't have my phone with me. And when I got home, I talked to the cops and told them the story there. Um, she says she's feeling guilty about them being the she's being she feels guilty about being the reason they're in this mess. She tells them she remembers something about that night. And we get a flashback to the convertible top opening and we see cuts of keys and the stars. Um, Emily says some things can help trigger memories, um, but doesn't know if the car she saw looks similar or was the same car. She then shows the text from the unknown, um, unknown caller to her friends. Hannah says it's not, this can't be starting again. Mona is A and she's at the hospital. Arya says we don't know for sure she's there. And Hannah says, oh, I do. And then confesses to visiting her. Arya's like, I can't believe you're just a visitor. She tried to kill you. All the friends are, um reacting negatively hannah says trust me she doesn't know anything spencer says okay there's something i have to show you all uh we cut to them all in the empty room at the lost woods resort or yeah motel as spencer shows them a 3d visualization of a's lair she points to in the room where all the things used to be hanging because this is the room that used to be a's lair spencer has been coming here all summer to figure things out and like put this together the friends uh, then all come clean to Emily um, that they had lied and they had told her originally that when they had got here um, that the cops had cleaned it out. Um, but instead, the first day that they came back, it was empty when they arrived. Emily says maybe the police took it and Hannah um, mentions that Mona would be in jail if the police had found it. Arya says Fitz would be too. And her mom would be in jail. She said her mom would be in jail if she, if the cops knew what Mona had known about her mother. Oh, I, I missed that. Okay. I thought it was like more like hard evidence on like Mona. No, no, it was that her mom would be in, be jail. in jail. Got it. And then Arya says Fitz would be too. Mm -hmm. um, Spencer says Mona had to have help doing things and she wonders if the black swan had something to do with it. They then hear a car alarm go off as they come outside to uh, Spencer's car doors all open and filled with photos of them in front of the open grave. They all get texts 
from A that says, Mona played with dolls. I play with body parts. Game on, bitches. No POV shot this episode. So the end. All right. Where's Ali's body? Yeah, that's the weirdest one of like, why take the entire body? Mm -hmm. Unless she's not dead and there was nobody there to begin with. So then, so that'd be one theory. Whose autopsy do they have? Yeah, that could be someone else's autopsy. I'm not sure. A fake autopsy report, potentially. Someone could have submitted a fake autopsy. uh, Autopsy. Autopsy. Um, Autopsy. Um, And so that's, that's, my bet that's one theory that's one track um and that inside the coffin was um things related to like safe keepings on like some sort of guilt of like what the nit club was up to got it um more likely i i do think on the other track Someone could have, the NAT club people could have stolen the body. Mm. And that there was also evidence related to their misdeeds and who killed Allison, I think. There's so many bodies in this season, just like mm. dead people everywhere. <laughs> just being moved around, shipped around. Um, I think it's really effective, though, like, of like, why would someone go after the body? Mm-hmm. The, 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 that leads you down so many paths. Mm-hmm. Who would do it? Why were they in the body? What what purpose would that possibly serve for the person? And um, what uh, you know, what does it relate to? Mm-hmm. So good stuff there. And then also very effective that you have um, Emily outside of it, like getting you now the friends are all roped in around this like new big lie, mm-hmm. quote unquote. So you're there's a lot of resetting happening here. Um, that I think is effective because I I like this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it's all it's all uh, it's all interesting. Um, how do we think Emily got to the cemetery? Who drew her there? Yeah. Why? Um, I do think it's a Jenna. Uh-huh. I do think that's the our best lead is Jenna driving that Mustang that we saw her drive last time. Uh huh. Um, so that's why I think it's probably related to the NAT club, whatever was in that casket. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Jenna did drive her there. Um, she got a call from Jenna and so she goes outside. Jenna told her something to get her outside. Mm-hmm. Um, probably didn't take much cause Emily was pretty drunk. And then I think Jenna was like, Oh, you're drunk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I think also those photos and whoever this new a is, is related to that. Um, as part of the Jenna NAT club roll up could potentially be whoever black swan is. Um, so I think it was Jenna that drove the car and drove her there. Um, let's talk about Ezra's let's make this our anniversary, not Allison's death anniversary. It's weird, right? I know it's, there's so much of fits in this episode. That's just like, do you not see what's happening around you? Like when Ella is just like the last thing she needs Mm -hmm. is like the police asking questions. And he goes like, well, I thought we were past this. Mm hmm. There's a there's a model happening here that's uh, it's not great. Um, very, you know, have some compassion. <laughs> I don't know what what I need to tell you, dude. That like maybe you need to find another day for your anniversary because yeah. like her friend died, mm-hmm. and this has been plaguing her since that happened. Mm-hmm. Um. It's way more than just a death because she can't properly mourn it because it's still everywhere happening mm-hmm. um, and drawing her in. So like back the fuck off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did think it was funny in the reading, though, that supports a lot of my frustrations with Ezra is that uh, there, <laughs> I read of the um, when they were presenting, they're talking about what's going to come to season two at like a. Uh, TV critics like panel thing and it's just like oh um, and I thought it was very funny that of course the blog writer is writing about Ezria questions that they answer because of course the fandom probably obviously really loved it mm-hmm. um, we ate Ezria yeah. up because like when you are in that like 16 to 18 category you don't think about how creepy he is no and the, that do the doomed love and all that sort of stuff um, and uh, or like forbidden, sorry, not doomed. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we never know. Well, and when boys your own age are such duds, you're like, you know what? Maybe like a 22, 24 year old man would be ideal. 
it's wrong. Don't do that. <laughs> but you, just, right. you know, and he's a, you know, he's at least a nice enough guy, like on the surface. Mm-hmm. And I think we, with being hindsight of just like, well, okay, that doesn't make sense. That's bad. That's mm-hmm. bad. Um, but also then the yeah. So they mention it's like oh yeah, like they're they're in they're like um oh god and not like 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 partners forever pretty much like, like they're soulmates. in like soulmates yeah they they use soulmates and then someone in the uh one of the critics asked about the legality of their relationship and they stepped in real quick of just like well we don't focus on that it's like all about like love <laughs> and the thirds and it's like okay like you're just trying to paper over as much as possible uh-huh um Ren volunteering at Radley. Is this man everywhere? What does he do? <laughs> I know. What is he actually doing there? Because he seems very involved also with the patients. Yeah, because he's volunteering as a doctor. I know, but you would think that they would have, like, I don't know, I guess other medical staff that, like, specialize in mental health. Mm-hmm. What is this Ren's specialty? The Swiss Army knife of doctors? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Is he also doing surgery? Is he also a podiatrist, an allergist? Someone is going to develop a severe allergy to cats and then Ren's going to be at the office. Oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very convenient to have Ren there. And I'm happy with... He's a doctor. Yes. I'm happy with where it was going, that it's just going to be he's a... um, Well, that he's more like confidant and things to like talk to hannah i hope it doesn't turn romantic because i will bash my head into this desk um it seems like at least like caleb is like starting to get threatened about it and i'm like i don't know about this um but uh um you know uh (laughs) being hyperbolic aside uh i i like at least in these episodes it's like okay we can He's a gateway to talk about mental health and someone like living with a someone important to you that is suffering. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that is uh, all good. Mm-hmm. Um, their moments together are good. I, again, I think the Mona thing is like way played up <laughs> um, in, a, mm-hmm. in like a maybe a little bit way more negative sense that you can read it because it's like what exactly is going on with her? They, but they just want the trappings of like the like, oh, she's like she's crazy mm-hmm. um so they, they you know they're leaning into some of the worst parts of mental health depiction mm-hmm. um but i think at least the parts of that what hannah is doing there and then also talking to ren about it is uh good mm-hmm. um was someone in the bathroom with aria or did she just have a panic attack i think she did just have a panic attack um i think kind of as we're looking at all the different friends and what their like how the trauma is kind of like manifesting Mm -hmm. to all of them and i think aria is like it's still suffering from anxiety if not ptsd from it Mm -hmm. um and i and i think is aria's is a lot more subtle i think that's why we also get the nightmare and things Mm -hmm. Uh, will that get will this of course get complicated by real world events of like am i seeing things or not Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly where this is going. But I think for now, what we're seeing is just a more depiction of like where Arya is at through that scene, Mm -hmm. Um, which is uh, very fragile, not talking about it. Um, And she's got a lot to do with. They all do. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's also interesting where we lead off with everybody. Spencer, of course, diving into like fixation. Mm -hmm. Emily trying to deal with, uh, and like not avoid because she's not avoiding it but like just really giving into grief mm-hmm. um hannah trying to so- like go to the person itself and trying to get answers from them mm-hmm. without do without being able to do the work on her own and i think maybe aria's is more the sublimated one um where she is like experiencing um you know nightmares and things like that that mm-hmm. um plague her mm-hmm um, which is all interesting i think it's all that's all very uh very good and aligned with the characters of like where we're gonna go i love it um i had like you talk like talking about emily and toby but we already talked about that you um oh yeah we'll just give like them another that. shout out they're great love them um, um it's just so wholesome and nice and one of my questions is answered in the next episode to the who's calling spencer so we're not going to touch on that oh um, yes oh it's answered i guess in this one mm-hmm. um is mona truly seeing Allie, or is it due to her psychosis medication 
current state. Oh, so like what the treatment she's getting at Radley is like manifesting Allie. Mm hmm. Is she seeing Allie of her own accord? Is she seeing Allie due to the treatment? Is she trying to convince Hannah she sees Allie? What's the... Yeah. What's the angle there? Yeah, that one's messy. Because my, like... Re I guess my reading of it is that she's seeing her because of her illness. Mm -hmm. um, not because it's, like, how... Whatever, like, kind of, like doped up she is at at radley mm -hmm. but um yeah i think that 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 one's all a little bit of messy i don't think she if anything she would be trying to keep it from hannah okay i think that we'll wrap back around to like the scenes we get last in the season finale of um her running into allison they're gonna be more connected than we thought Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think there's going to there's going to be more of like a, a handoff there. Like, I don't think that flashback is completely false. OK, um, but uh, and so it's going to complicate um, Mona's motives, I think, as as a because of that and her relationship to Allison. Um, but I yeah, I think for now, that's maybe just like supposed to be like Mona's seeing things mm -hmm. and I'm like, eh. yeah. oh, another uh, a, a thing that. Uh, uh, just I just like the terminology just to throw it out there um, with the actress who played Mona um, she someone was like oh are you gonna miss playing Queen Bee They're like who who did you like playing the most like nerdy Mona Queen Bee Mona or like you know a like mm -hmm. I think they use crazy um, mm -hmm. Mona um, and she's like I'm gonna miss like playing Queen Bee Mona and I think I will too who says she's gone that's true fair enough um does Garrett actually know anything yeah Garrett definitely does. Man, that man's been driving all over town. He knows, he knows something. He was also in that room. That shortcut to get from A Street to Z Street. A Street yeah. Um, he's not going to know as much as we hope. No one does. Exactly. No one ever gives us enough information. Uh huh. It, again, uh, unlocking memories of Lost in the past. There's a really late episode with like someone someone like a Garrett in the sense that uh, you think they're connected more to things that are happening and would know more mm -hmm. and you find out it doesn't know shit. Uh, <laughs> so it is, do I think like with Garrett, there's going to be like some stuff revealed and like not all of it. Ah, yeah, definitely. Um, because even though Garrett is like, seems to be ground zero for almost everything. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I do find um, Garrett uh, behind glass uh, a fun new wrinkle. I like it. Um, who took all the A stuff out of the room? Yeah. Um, quote unquote A team. Um, possibly Jenna and her crew. Lucas, uh, the Lucas, um, uh, the, the Lucas Black Swan Jenna trio. Because Lucas is a Black Swan. That's right. I don't know how I did it twice because the dark Lucas and Lucas. Um, there we go. I can see Lucas being the one that like out of that crew to be like, okay, Lucas, you're going to go in there. You're going to clean this out now. Mm -hmm. All right. Those are my questions for you. Ready to move on to episode two. I am episode 49 season three, episode two blood is the new black. That was another thing that, uh, Marlon King and the wrap up with entertainment. We really kept saying red is the new black. That was like their idea for season three. Ella is teaching class and lecturing them. Oh, I get it because of the red jacket instead of the black hoodie. Oh, I didn't even put that one together. Uh, Emily is lecturing the class. What did uh, you think it meant then? Oh, I thought like more. I was like, oh, maybe it'll like come in time. I didn't really like, like put it, it together. Go. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, this will have something to do with the new mystery. Um, But that makes a lot of sense. So obvious from the beginning. Uh, Brenton's Theory Corner, where you hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Emily searches uh, her purse and finds a, oh God, yeah, finds a necklace that has like beaded letters on it that says dead girls can't smile and has teeth attached. Uh, for those who don't know, I have a big phobia of teeth. Um, I don't like teeth. You don't like teeth? You don't like eyeballs either? No, I don't like that either. Because <laughs> whenever I make you look like if there's something in my eye, you look like you're going to throw up. Teeth are worse. Um, yeah, there's something weird about looking at, like, trying to, like, look into someone's, like, eyeball that's, like, 
really weird to me. Um. Anyways, uh, let's step out of my brain and back into uh, my summary. Phobia corner. <laughs> Giant spiders. <laughs> um, Emily runs out of the class. Uh, the friends then all chase after her and uh, run to the bathroom. Um, they discuss whether the necklace is real teeth. They all argue over whether to come clean about it, and Emily is feeling guilty. <laughs> Hannah, Hannah, of course, even of course, out of pocket, is just like, it'd be nice if you remembered something. Um, and uh, they all feel guilty, and they all wonder what to do with the necklace. Um, they then, uh, it, as they're kind of like tugging over it, it falls into the toilet. Um, uh, but these are the automatic toilets, and so Spencer goes to grab it, uh, but then gets spooked by a sound and pulls her hand back, and so uh, the toilet flushes and the necklace goes with it. At the lunch table, uh, they all discuss what just happened, and the friends all agree that Hannah needs to go back and see Mona to get some answers. Spencer's like, hey, I'll even continue seeing Garrett um, if you will go to uh, see Mona. Hannah doesn't answer and leaves the table and almost runs into Jenna, who's walking around with her glasses on and her walking stick. Emily mentions no one has spoken to her since she got back. And Spencer mentions that she was away at music camp all summer. They discuss uh, Lucas's weird actions um, and wonder what his connection to Jenna is and their connections to Mona. Ari asks if Jenna is blinder than she was last year as Jenna runs straight into someone um, and spills her drink. Caleb is fixing a computer at school as Hannah comes up and asks if they can do dinner tomorrow night instead because, like, tonight I gotta do something with my mom. Caleb has a sad, a sad expression but says that's fine. Emily and the other friends uh, discuss Emily potentially getting uh, held back because she's been behind in school. Um, they all agree she needs a tutor for English, and Arya's like, oh, you should totally, like, go see Ezra. Uh, he'll help you. Uh, Emily's like, no way. Uh, but Arya pushes her to agree. They then see a ghost from Arya's past, a blonde ghost named Meredith, walking the halls with a faculty member. Arya walks up and asks what she's doing there, and Meredith says she's applying for a teaching position. Arya vents to Fitz about this in the car, and Fitz says, you don't, you know, you don't have to tell your mom, like, right away yet. Like, you don't know, like, if Meredith will get the job. Maybe, like, you don't even need to tell your dad, too, since you're, like, on scorched earth with him, scorched earth with him at the moment. Like, right now, I have to, like, drop you off down the block because of that. Um, and they discuss uh, their bad position with him still. Arya gets a call from Emily and tells her to call Fitz, and which she eventually does, and Arya is happy about this. Spencer is visiting Garrett at the jail. Um, she wants a better reason to help him out. Garrett says, I didn't kill Allison, and what was snatched from her grave would have shown I was innocent. He says, someone you know well has you fooled. People lie, but medical records don't. Spencer asks who he's talking about. Garrett motions to be taken away as Spencer tries to hound him for an answer. Hannah is visiting Mona and catching her up on the school gossip. She asks if Mona has heard from Noel at all and if he's come to visit her or anyone has anyone else beside me come to visit you. Mona just stares at her. Hannah yells at her and says, you owe me because you have made my life a nightmare as Hannah loses it, rips off her name tag, throws it in the bin, uh, and knocks over a table. Uh, Ren busts or knocks over a chair. Ren busts in and we see Mona kind of half smile. Uh, Mona notices the name tag that Hannah ripped off in the trash can. Emily then goes to see <laughs> Fitz at a coffee place. Uh, she says, hi, Mr. Fitz. And he's like, oh, you know, no worries. You can call me Ezra. And she's like, I can't do that. <laughs> like you. Uh, Fitz says, well, you know, I wanted to say I'm sorry about Maya. Emily's like, I don't want to talk about it. And he's like, I just want you to know that I'm sorry. Weird. <laughs> Why do you think he's sorry? I know. I'm like, what, you, you got something you need to confess here, bud? Emily's Catholic. She knows all about this. Um, Forgive me, Emily, for I have sinned. sinned. Uh -huh. Is that what you do every day? <laughs> it has been... I hear your confession. It has been eight hours since my last confession. Um, <laughs> You're like, I ate a cookie. I'm like, <laughs> right? True Catholic guilt. Right. I enjoyed myself today. No, I didn't. Have you ever felt joy? I didn't completely... Wash my hands too well. I just kind of dunked them in water. <laughs> uh, Ren talks to Hannah um, at the hospital, and Hannah says, sorry, I lost it. Ren says, I've done the same thing visiting my dad. He got interned when I was 10. Um, you know, it's really tough. Hannah says she won't apologize, um, and he says, you have to accept 
or like says Mona won't apologize. And um, he says, you have to accept that it's hard to reconcile the person you lost, um, the, like that person you knew, and then also the Mona that you didn't know. Spencer and Toby are at Spencer's house. Spencer asks where Jenna went after music camp ended. I looked online and it ended before she came back. Where did she go? Toby says, I moved out before um, she came back and my parents treated her way more carefully after the surgery didn't go well. Um, they like, he's likens it to like one of her snow globes that if like they asked her too many hard questions, she'd break. They then make out on the couch as Veronica comes home. Veronica asks if Melissa called and Spencer's like, no, is she okay? And Veronica says, I don't think okay applies in her situation. The friends are all at school and Arya notices an envelope in her locker and opens it to find an earring. We then get a flashback. Arya and Allison are digging through Arya's dad's office, looking for something, and Ali finds this earring in the couch. Arya then furiously digs through the couch and finds another one. Allison says, oh, they've been spending quality time here together. Um, Arya says, why would he lie? He said he ended it. And Allison says, if you want to get rid of this bitch, you have to help him realize what she is. They then destroy his office and write notes on the wall. Um, in the present, the friends wonder why Arya didn't tell them about this and why is the earring in her locker? Arya says, remember when Allison's mom asked if we wanted to bury something with Allison as a keepsake? And she says, I put this earring in the casket. Fitz and Emily are in tutoring lessons at the coffee shop and Emily is distracted. Fitz then coaches through, through like how to prepare for the, taking the exams because he's like, you know the material. Just like, what do you do when you like get prepared to swim? Like she's like, I listen to music. He's like, just do that, and like you'll be ready. Um, Arya leaves for school uh, or leaves school and sees Jenna sitting alone. Uh, Arya then gets a text from Fitz, and Jenna's like, Oh, is that you, Arya? I thought I recognized that ringtone. She's like, I was gonna call you tonight. Um, I want you to play a piece with me for the upcoming assembly. Wouldn't that be great? Like, can you come over tomorrow? Arya says, Sorry, my dad needs like me for something. He's actually waving at me from across the street. Gotta go. As Ariel uh, walks away, um, Jenna pulls down her glasses and stares at her. Anna talks to Arya about the Jenna invite and asks if Arya got a note to go along with the earring. Caleb then walks in with food, um, so Hannah hangs up with Arya. Uh, Hannah keeps looking at the clock, and Caleb asks if she has somewhere else she needs to be, and she says no. Veronica walks into Spencer's room angry, saying, Why would you be making secret trips to the county jail? Spencer says, I want some answers from Garrett. Veronica says, the DA's office didn't send you there to get them. So, like, this is a dangerous man. Don't go over there. Ever, don't go there ever again. Spencer says, oh, Rosewood's safe now all of a sudden since he's locked up. Veronica says, if you're implying that he has friends helping him out, then it's even better reason for you not to go. They maybe will even think that one of the friends is you. Caleb confronts Hannah um, on her continuing to stare at the clock. Hannah says she wants to visit Mona, and Caleb's like, why would you want to do that? <laughs> Hannah says it hurts me to see her like this, and quote um, one of Ren's medical terms that he used before, um, which was called ambiguous loss, where you lose someone even though they're like still really there. Like, you never get to like, really properly mourn them. Um, and Caleb's like, where did you pick that up? Um, and she's like, I looked it up on the internet. Caleb says, I'll take you there. And then Hannah says, like, why would you do that? And he's like, because I love you, and I don't want us sneaking around each other. Great job, Caleb. Arya sits in her room, looking at the... Well, there we go. Um, looking at the earring and gets a text uh, from A that says, Daddy needs to know. Or, or It's like really weird. It's like, these are all periods. Daddy needs to know. Or I let the other one go. To the police. Night, night. <laughs> what is the punctuation? Um, she hears a rustle in the trees, but doesn't see anything. She turns around and we see a shadow dart across. Arya sees her dad walk by her room and she stops him to talk. Uh, she comes clean about trashing his office in the past. Byron is like, why are you telling me this? Like, was this like seeing Meredith yesterday that just jog all this up? You're telling me that I said all those harsh things to her for something you did? He then goes to leave and says, we both owe her an apology and I'm not doing that alone. What is wrong with like, you? I'm not doing it for you. <clears throat> what is wrong with you? Yeah, Byron's the worst. Absolute worst. Um, you know, the other shoe has not dropped on uh 
like um hannah's dad making it more more miserable to her other than like kate like oh god that kate plot line i don't want to think about but so <laughs> byron's really taken ahead uh emily listens to music ahead of her tests and then seems as she starts seems to be doing well Caleb and Hannah visit Mona. Um, Caleb waits in the hall as Hannah goes in to see her. We now see that Hannah is wearing a Marin name tag. Uh, she says she didn't come to throw chairs again, pulls out her makeup kit, and says, I brought the good stuff. Toby and Spencer are at lunch. Uh, Toby says she fa- he found eye drops in Jenna's bathroom um, and, like, look at the expiration dates on the bottle. This, like, first bottle was prescri- prescribed to Jenna after her surgery. And the second bottle has an upcoming Sorry. expiration date. Um, if the surgery didn't work, why is she renewing her prescription? Emily takes her test um, and sees a girl putting her hair up in the front of the room. Emily then has a flashback again and remembers being in the car as a woman puts up their hair. Emily then remembers seeing the face and it's Jenna. Emily turns in her test as Ella is concerned for her. Um, Aria enters a coffee shop and goes to talk to Meredith. Aria says she'd rather not do this here, but Meredith's like, well, we're here now. Like, you that you just have to, like, deal with it. Sit. Aria tells her about trashing the office, and Meredith's like, no need to, like, go into all the details. Your father called me this morning and let me know. Aria says, sorry, and Meredith says, thank you. Maybe I'll hear that from your father tomorrow. We have lunch plans. Aria says, I didn't go there to steal the earrings. Um, and Meredith is, con- like, confused by this. Like, earrings? Arya then shows her, and Meredith says, that earring doesn't belong to me. Hmm. The fucking worst. Spencer is trying to visit Garrett, uh, but it turns out he's seeing his lawyer. So Spencer then goes out and waits in the hall and reviews the eye drop bottles um, that Toby had showed her. Spencer then sees her mom sign into the room and asking for a list of visitors from the past five months. She then leaves the room but misses seeing Spencer. Caleb is outside playing solitaire on his phone, waiting for Hannah. Ren then walks up and is like, oh, are you with Hannah? And introduces himself. Ren asks, "Um, I'm glad you decided to join her this time. Uh, It seems like her coming here has helped Mona a lot. And mentions that yesterday was a turning point for, like, I think it's also helping Hannah. It's a real turning point for her dealing with her ambiguous loss. And Caleb recognizes the term and looks, like, upset about this. Spencer is visiting Garrett, finally, and he says, I can't talk. My new attorney won't let me. Spencer says, how did that happen? Tries to ask him, like, how did you get my mom to represent you? And tries to ask him questions, but Garrett just smiles and asks to be taken away. Ella grades Emily's test and notices that she didn't do large portions of it. Ella then decides to fill in the other answers. Uh, She's at the school, and we hear a noise from the hallway, and we get a POV shot watching Ella file the tests. Hannah finishes Mona's makeup and tries to reach back out to her. Um, Hannah says, you rent, um, uh, the first, you weren't the first person to hurt me, Mona, and won't be the last. Mona then looks at her and says, you're getting them again, aren't you? The texts. Caleb then enters to let her know that visiting hours are over, and Hannah's like, no, wait, uh, like, okay, we'll come right out. Like, I just need to, like, talk to her some more. Tries to talk to Mona about, like, the text, um, but she gets shut down. Like Mona just shuts back down. Hannah says, we're not done with this and I'm coming back and leaves with Caleb. Mo- we then find Mona um, pulls out tweezers from under her gown that she had hidden and stabs her finger until it bleeds. Mm-hmm. Fitz visits Ella to ask about Emily at school and like how she did. Ella's like, she did fine. No need for her to take it again. And Fitz is like, oh, really? She was like so worried about it. And it's like, no, she did very well. We all want her to succeed. Back off. The friends are talking in the bathroom about the Mona visit um, and the earrings and Garrett and Emily remembering that Jenna was driving. Arya says, you don't remember anything clearly about that night, so how can you know? Emily says, like, she can see. (laughs) And she's probably on Mona's payroll. Uh, I think the other way around. The bell rings, and they all go to class. They then see that Jenna is heading to the bathroom, so Spencer's like, oh, wait, we gotta go inside. So they all run back into the bathroom, and uh, Spencer places the earring on the counter, and they all hide in the stalls. Jenna enters, fills her water bottle, pauses, and they see that uh, she looks at the earring on the counter, like picks it up, and then leaves. 
Hannah says she's ready to slap her again. And Spencer says, stop. And Arya's like, I'm ready to hang a sign on her that says the bitch can see. And Spencer's like, don't you get it? We don't let her know. We can use this. We then get another POV shot. Tons of dives are in a display case as a teller at like some sort of hunting shop sets down gloves. Uh, someone wearing a red coat orders a bunch of hoodies as well. Red is the new black. The end. Um. Okay. We won't talk about the teeth clue because it bothers you. Thank you. Um. I and it's scary. That's uh -huh. a very like scary thing to fucking find in your mm -hmm. purse that could potentially belong to your girlfriend. I'm actually so. I even or your mentioned dead, it. your dead friend. Um. Yeah. Or your dead friend. I uh, I didn't mention it in the previous one. It's like wild that at least for now, what we know, it's like Maya is dead. Mm -hmm. um, I was super surprised by that, um, and a, very problematic in terms of like we're gonna kill the queer character because mm -hmm. um, that's like a very like gross trope. Um, so it's it yeah, I'm wild. And even Barney King in that same interview was just like, well, we had to like we wanted to like to kill someone and it felt really bad, but like. <laughs> It's like, what? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I don't know. Sorry, but, um, yeah, yeah. Meredith, why is she applying to work at the high school? I know. I just, I feel like these adults are just like, I mean, Meredith is what? Like probably Fitz's age. Maybe she was his grad student, right? Uh huh. So maybe even younger. Uh huh. Well, okay. No. So no, no, probably about the same age. Um, or like maybe a year older, um, at the most, but, uh, he, is she just like trying to like come after Arya for no reason? It seems super petty. And also the way she treats her when Arya is like coming to apologize, which is just batshit. Mm -hmm. Um, that it's like, they just make her the absolute worst. Like she is just the embodiment of like. That like, ah, I'm coming to like steal that person that's important to you and your family. Um, it's like a uh, temptress, like sort of thing. This evil temptress. A siren. It's, yeah, breaking apart your family. But it's really the the man who's breaking apart your family that's making you apologize to the person he cheated with. Also, like, why is he taking this trash office so hard? Uh-huh. Very hard. Um, His 14-year-old daughter did it? Right. 14 or 15? Like, like who cares? Oh, I said so many bad things to her. You need to apologize. Sounds yeah, like why did she apologize? I know, um, fucked up. But I do find it funny that um, there are infinite flashbacks for us to like relive, of like new things for us to learn about. Mm -hmm. that, that it's like, oh, we need a new thing to kind of propel this forward. So it's like, oh, there's this like time where like Arya and Allison and like Josh Yavis. So it's like when you mentioned last time, it's like they make this poor girl do all sorts of flashbacks. Yeah, this girl's just she's in like so many episodes considering she's been dead since the first <laughs> one. Yep. Uh, I was like, oh, yes, because they just like, um, uh, you know, can always kind of go back in that same uh, Homestuck made this world podcast it's like yes the the past is an infinite place to like mine new things for us to learn about mm -hmm. um whose medical records is garrett referring to um oh yeah so my of course galaxy brain theory corner take on this is this is melissa what um, about her that it could be like something to do with whatever is actually going on i'm assuming her health the way like veronica refers to like considering melissa's like um situation yeah exactly okay could, like wouldn't qualify so i think something happened potentially with her and the baby that's like my galaxy brain take and mm -hmm. like you know they like kept mentioning her heart last season mm -hmm. it could be related to that so that's what i i think it could also be just um uh jenna um jenna's medical records um other for the surgery not going right mm-hmm and also potentially not getting another surgery um, for her other eye. Mm -hmm. And then um, the third option could be that the fake cops obviously report. Mm. But my immediate one was like, Melissa. <laughs> that was Love like my it. gut. <laughs> Whose earring is that? Yeah, I think he's doing sleeping around with someone else here, Byron. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised at all. That's where I think that's going. Um, 
and just another thing to hang over Arya is like the secret that she kept. Um, but uh, it just menaced her some more. But like, that's some shit. Mm-hmm. Maybe related to no, nah, maybe related to Black Swan. I don't know. Could be. Um, I think uh, I don't know. Byron, you're bad, dude. <laughs> Like, Byron sucks. He's the worst. Oh my god, just miserable, 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 miserable man. Why is Mrs. Hastings taking on Garrett's case? Um, yeah, that's a good. There was a good wrinkle there because then it's like, oh, she's getting mad at Spencer because Spencer's gonna find out, but like she's gonna have to find out eventually anyway. Um, so like, my guess is it's a Melissa cover thing that Garrett knows too much and so was able to somehow communicate maybe to Melissa I mean he's been calling Spencer Mm -hmm. but like if he could get to Melissa and least threaten enough to her Mm -hmm. that you know Melissa could get her mom to take the case because she takes the case after visiting Melissa Mm -hmm. Um, so my assumption is that it's a hate a classic hastings family cover-up we gotta he doesn't have that boy doesn't have this uh, this family's best interest at heart mm-hmm. no jason these episodes missing him um yeah but uh i think that's what it is classic hastings cover-up um what does mona know hmm. i'm gonna say Mona is connected to the NAT club and Jenna apparatus. Okay. Potentially knows who killed Allison as well. Oh, okay. Um, I think all of them do. Well, or do just the NAT club. That might just be the NAT club. So Mona just might know the wider a team quote unquote okay. um but then that doesn't yeah i'm a little I, i'm 50 50 on whether she knows about allison's killer what that is okay so there's all kinds of possibilities with mona right now mm-hmm. was she connected to allison more than we know is there like other schemes happening there potentially with the way we're getting the red coat and stuff, um, is uh, um, and I'm also putting that together from looking at accidentally seeing a synopsis for a later show, um, and seeing two characters that were in it. But um, uh-huh. I wouldn't take. I'm not going to take that as like fact. That's like just kind of like some other thing rattling around the back of my brain. Mm-hmm. But or, also, were those characters? Is that in the future or the past? Right. Exactly. And then Mona, um, I think more likely is still connected to a Jenna scheme sort of thing. Okay. But it seems like Mona is connected a lot more to what Allison was doing than actually being Allison's bully at a certain point. Who bullied who? Right. Did it eventually turn back around? Mm-hmm. Um, once, say, Allison found out. And I think like that meeting in Brookhaven didn't happen the way Mona told it, but like could be something different. So the best lights have a little bit of truth in them. Yeah. Um, Ella and Ezra are cheating for Emily. I know. Everyone's cheating for Emily. I know. It's so funny. Ella just being like, drop it, drop it. Um, Damn. drop it. Yeah. And I think it's very funny. Emily being like, I'm no, like I'm not even okay with your relationship. It is. <laughs> Uh you know it's just like you know it's fine that you do your things but like don't make him tutor me or don't don't make me call him ezra Uh uh-huh um so right like this this can only go great for emily's future Mm -hmm. (laughs) we're all rooting for emily uh yeah poor emily again just always through the ringer yeah that poor 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 girl um, we already know Jenna can see. Mm-hmm. Why did Jenna pick up Emily that night? Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. Of like, she wouldn't have known that Emily was shit faced. 
Unless she was really banking on Emily being shit faced, and this is just their plan with everything because they did the same thing with Jason. Um, <laughs> that that plausible deniability with a bunch of people being shit faced, and somehow that always works out. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if she was talking to Jen, if she talked to Emily somehow before, or she. There's also the possibility she could have drugged Emily. Um, mm-hmm. So, I was going to ask, do you think Emily was just drunk? I think potentially like drugged could be another possibility that I'm entertaining now. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's why, you know, she doesn't remember things and Jenna could pick her up and be like, you're going to forget just Mm -hmm. like, you know, the uh, Jason special of, you know, a six pack and a, you know, joint. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, to trap Emily one, but then also, which, Oh, I just clicked in my brain something. We'll get to it in a sec. Trap Emily one, um, and uh, uh, potentially had some sort of plausible deniability in the future where Emily wouldn't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my last but not least is: Do we have an A team? And if so, who's on it? And if so, why did they want Ali's body? Bum, ba-dum, bum, 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 bum. Theory corner. Uh, that's a team. Oh. Uh, yeah, we can move into theory corner. I assume this is part of your theory corner. Yes, it will be. So, um, yeah, let's go. Let's get a get us all ready here. Let's go into the theory corner. Yep. Uh, walk past the other desks and step into theory corner. Brenton's theory corner. Welcome to the station. Hard, hard, uh, um, yeah, hard crimes. <laughs> I was like, hard. We not. got, we got all kinds of crazy theories going on now. Mm-hmm. All kinds of moon parts. We need a cork board and some string for you. Yeah. So I had spent all last season or last season, the same show, uh, all the previous episodes saying that A was an antagonistic force to the Jenna crew. I am now thinking that. Uh, It is merely one part of the hierarchy of the Jenna outfit with Jenna being the boss, boss hog. So Jenna is still Thanos, you're saying? Jenna is at the top of the, she's the CEO. Okay. Um, And so one part of that is NAT club people that are in affiliates. Mm -hmm. The other part of that is the Lucas, Mona, Black Swan. And I think the Mugus, 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 yeah. That's a relationship name, Mucus. Um, They're together? Or Lona. Um, They uh, both were um, brought in by Jenna because of the way Allison treated them. Okay. Um, And so Mona was already going after Allison, brought in these other people to, like, help do things against Allison. And, but eventually Mona had that run in with Allison and Brooke Haven and that changed things. She became a like silent partner with Allison to get things done. Okay. What exactly? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, and so then after Allison passed away and things and things started coming back up with the friends coming back into town and things, I would like to think that it's, we're going to set aside the, the thing that Mona gave us at the end of last year as the explanation was that she felt threatened that Hannah was going to be pulled away from her friends. Just going to set that to the side because I don't like it. Um, and we're going to say it is more in death that she starts working again with Mona and crew, not Mona, uh, Jenna and crew <clears throat> to kind of like terrorize them yet again. Um, mm-hmm. And I think a lot of that is fueled by like Jenna wanting revenge. Um, and also whatever else is going on with Ian and NAT club and all this stuff they were kind of originally going for. Um, and so, um, oh, I think, uh, Jenna pulling in, uh, like Jenna coordinated the digging up the body. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think the person that took the photo was none other than our yearbook photographer, Lucas. I was like, oh, that's that... a really high quality photo. Exactly. That was the thing that just like clicked in my brain again. Mm. Um, so I think there's more potential of Lucas being the one of some of the A techs this time around. I think that's more um, seems more likely since he's connected with these things. 
Um, Mona wrote better copy. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I was like, what the hell is going on with these texts? Uh, <laughs> at least that one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, bu -bu -bu. And so Mona is like connected to all of them still. Like it, it is pretty much like cut off from them. Um, mm -hmm. It was never like this like really like buddy buddy relationship sort of mm -hmm. thing. Uh, all means to an end with each other. Um, I don't know who in the hell the Black Swan is going to be. Um, again, to Hannah's point, like I, I just don't think there's enough for me to be able to pull that out. I think mm -hmm. the only one I could really think of that would like potentially fit that out of our like side characters would be like Paige, and like that could potentially be it. But like. Paige isn't enough of a character at the moment. So and we saw really, her like, that night in a different outfit. outfit. Right. So she would, and then I think she might have entered, she, like, we, the Black Swan might have entered and we saw Paige and, like, other things. So mm -hmm. I, I really don't know. I don't have a good sense at all of, like, <laughs> it's supposed to be. I don't think her body type, that, like, person's body type fits anybody else's. Um, but I could be completely wrong. Um, could be Melissa if Melissa wasn't pregnant and had the baby whatever is going on there um oh, yeah because once you have the baby you immediately get skinny again right so i'm saying didn't have the baby oh i thought you said and had the baby no 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 um, like, oh, which, yeah. if we're going by my theory of the medical records being related to her then she was lying about that medical records again there could be this whole other contingent of like if allison is still alive could have been like communicating with mona like get things done get things on these other people and if Allison's still alive, then um, uh, would be antagonistic, I think, to Jenna. Um, but and I also think the the a key again for like the Jenna connection, to all of these people is like Halloween episode, um, where we kind of mm -hmm. go back and we see them, Mona and Jenna, kind of meeting and being like, yes, of course. And then Lucas also running around trying to like terrorize Allison mm -hmm. on his own and kind of failing. But like Jenna coming up as this person is like, I'm I, you don't have to like bow to her, like bow to Allison in a sense. Like I'm I could be just as scary. Mm -hmm. Um, What else? And um, yeah, and then we talked about what why um, Mrs. Hastings is. Uh, um, Helping uh, Garrett. Garrett. Yeah. And I think that's, again, the classic Hastings cover up. Was did I answer your questions? I'm trying to remember if I did. Um, let's double check. I'm now drawing. A we blank. have a team. Who's on it? Why oh, do yeah. they want Allie's body? Yeah, that's that is the question. There's got to be things that were buried with her, like a pharaoh. Um, <laughs> that they like had to pull up and exhume. Um, so I think there's part of it, and there's also the possibility that there was no body in that casket to begin with. Mm. Um, but I uh. Um, I'm curious. There is also the possibility that there is the twin. Um, that there is a twin running around, um, mm. related to Allison. So, um, the twin yeah. twist is a common theory. Yeah, I just, yeah, I think that's a, yeah, that 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 could be a, a big big one. Um, that she's there's this uh other Allison running around. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I believe, uh, as the wiki said, like this could potentially point to the existence of, uh, I believe they named her like Courtney. I didn't like click on. Oh, thing. that's from the book, right? So Allison right. has a twin named Courtney in the book, I, who is like. I was wondering if it was a fan name that someone they come up. I didn't like click into no, it. No, no, no. Like, it was more. from the books. Yeah. So, um, you, that could potentially be it. Mm -hmm. But um, could be it. I don't. I don't. Maybe. So we'll see. Um, but again, I, I do think that there is an A-team and Jenna mm. at the top. Okay. I love it. Steepled fingers. Um, and I, I think it'll be very fun over the next few episodes seeing the friends trying to get her to cop to being able to see. Uh-huh. <laughs> in, in the worst way possible. Um, but yeah. I love so, it. So spaghetti at the wall at the moment, as you can tell. But, well, you fine. know. We're starting from scratch. This is exciting times. Yeah. Um. Any final thoughts on this episode? Well, um. Yeah. No other theories. So we'll step out. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye. Um. 
no, I, I, I think these episodes were really great. I think that uh, was a really strong pilot, especially. Um, and I think it's the best it's time. Season opener? Is it really a pilot? Oh, the show's God. already picked up. Nope. It's season opener. Um, and uh, I think. Uh, and your you watch TV critically. I know. <laughs> and I think um, it's the best use of jump forward in time that we've seen yet. That they've end of used it a couple times. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited. Awesome. Well, shall we plug? Let's do it. When I'm not here doing this, I do other things. Mostly I talk about books on TikTok lately. It's just kind of the vibe I'm in. You can find my link tree that has my links to all my social platforms, my website, everything um, in the description. You can find this podcast uh, in video form on YouTube at Dead Ends or on all your podcast plat platforms of choice at Dead Ends. Platyforms. Platyforms. You can also send any questions or emails to Dead Ends uh dead ends pcast at gmail.com you'll find that in all the episode descriptions um and uh, we're also on twitter if you want to just keep up with uh episode releases at dead ends podcast um yeah rate review subscribe five stars we appreciate it all that we're again we're a small podcast so any good word of mouth uh, helps us a lot we're so small yeah so small um, so yeah, we appreciate any and all of those things. And you can also find the things in my league tree uh, below there. They're all kind of stagnated at the moment. At some point we will do another let's play. And at some point I will write a blog. We'll have energy again. Yeah. It'll be nice. It will be nice. All right. Well, we're still here. We're going to find out everything. There you go. Bye. -bye.